Hi there everybody, what's up? My name is Magnus and you're watching Coding TensorFlow, the show where you learn how to code in TensorFlow. All right, in this episode, we'll talk about model overfitting and underfitting, a common challenge when doing machine learning. And since there is quite a lot to cover, this material will be a two episode video. In this first episode, we'll focus on getting the input data ready. Remember the text classification episode of Coding TensorFlow, where we classified IMDB movie reviews. If not, you should check it out now using the links below. Don't worry, it's okay. I'll wait for you here. This is a diagram from that video. The loss initially decreased on both the training and the validation datasets. But after a bit, training loss would continue to go down while validation loss would start to increase. This is called overfitting. The model becomes too specialized on solving for the training data and starts to perform worse when validated on the test data. You can say the model memorizes the answers in the training dataset and does not generalize to the test dataset. The opposite situation is called underfitting, where the model does not have enough variables to solve the training dataset, and a more advanced model with more parameters and variables would perform better. In this video, we'll use the IMDB dataset, as we did in the text classification video, to classify if movie reviews are good or bad. But the important stuff in this video is to explore what overfitting and underfitting means. All right, that's enough words. Let's get started executing the code. You'll find it below. We start by checking out the awesome licenses here at the top. Then importing all stuff and print the TensorFlow version. And it's totally okay if you get a later version printed here, of course. Now loading the dataset into the train and test tuple pairs. The numwords parameter specifies the maximum number of words we should consider. Remember from the text classification video, we don't actually get the movie reviews as English words, but rather as a set of numbers, where each number is an ID of a word. Actually, ID number one denotes the word the, and two is the word and, and so on. The IMDB dataset is also sorted, meaning that the the is the most common word in the reviews. And since we're loading 10,000 words, that means we're loading the 10,000 most common words across all the reviews. For our model, we want the input to be a multi-hot encoded array, which is achieved by this code snippet. So what is this multi-hot encoded array anyway? Well, let's say we want to feed the model the sentence, the small cat. Then we will feed the model with an array, which has the value one for each word index present in the review, and where all other indexes are set to zero. So now you know why it's called a multi-hot encoding. Here, we plot the first training data example, where the y-axis indicates the hot encoding and the x-axis is the word ID. You can see we mostly have words with low IDs, which makes sense, since these are the most common words used in the reviews. And that's almost it for this episode, but I will give you a little bit of homework while waiting for the next part. Remember, I said that number one map to the word the, and two to and. How did I find out that these numbers map to these words? As a hint, you should check out the following function. And as a second hint, you should check out the code in the text classification video also. All right, that's it for this episode. Now it's your turn to go out there and create some great models. And I will see you in the next episode.